Hey guys, um, just doing a little brief live stream here. Um, having less time to do these, but still trying to get a few in. If uh, you come in, let me know, you can hear me uh, well. And please, when you come in, of course, uh, hit the like button. Um, and if you can, uh, hit us with super chats. That is hugely helpful for the YouTube channel and everything we're doing. Uh, oh, I, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, sometimes that happens automatically, actually. Um, but hit us with super chats and um, maybe I'll, I'll take, I'll try to take a few questions, but I wanna um, actually talk about a topic, make these a little bit more focused. And um, if you're a patron at patreon.com slash TMBS, thank you. Let folks know um, uh, how good it is, how good the, uh, all the content is. And we need patrons uh, and we appreciate uh, all of you as we do our work. Patreon.com slash TMBS, TMBS.FM for uh, awesome American union made merch. So I keep thinking about this cosmopolitan socialist idea, which I wrote about in Against, against the Web. And um, what was interesting in that was I, I, I think that that model is definitely the one we need. I really do think that it's the answer to the reactionary forces that defend uh, various historically contingent hierarchies. Um, I think it's an answer, a dynamic answer to the resurgence of things like nationalism, which has obviously been very prevalent right now. There's a breakdown in the global system and there's a breakdown of worldviews um, that is facilitating a lot of moves on the right. And it's also facilitating some moves on the actual left and some moves in the more sort of neoliberal discursive lane. And, um, and, and all of the toxicities and, and excesses that go along with things like, you know, the, the white fragility book and this type of stuff. And all I was doing with this cosmopolitan socialist idea was really to just try to say there is kind of a couple, a couple of basic blocks of how to look at the world. And one is that, and it's funny because you could, they flip it either way. The traditional chauvinist, bigoted, imperial, settler, colonialist way is to say that there is a Western tradition. West is best. West has given us all of the good things and other cultures either have to catch up or they can't. It's all some version of racism and paternalism built out of imperial and colonialist narratives. Now, there's this kind of countervailing force, actually, which sort of, you know, goes beyond the correct historical understanding of uh, European imperialism, U.S. hegemony, and all these structures arising from capital and labor and race uh, to just saying, like, no, actually, like, the West is intrinsically evil. And all of this, you know, instead of it's the best, it's the worst. And the cosmopolitan model, what it really does is it says, and, oh, and then the, the second model is, is really to say, like, all cultures are distinct and different and never shall they really meet. They're on different trajectories. And what's interesting is that there's right and left versions of all of these arguments. Or I should say some people on the, I, I think ultimately either chauvinism or essentialism of any culture or complete um, saying that there isn't uh, global and cosmopolitan overlap. I think those are all fundamentally reactionary arguments, but sometimes you'll see them manifest in different guises. What the cosmopolitanism argument says in a really simple and basic way, and you could see this from all of the greats, whether we're talking about, you know, Amartya Sen or Cornell West, is that basically that like, there is shared human desires. There is shared universal traits. Most all human beings really want the same things. There's a shared global human experience. But then there's also a variety of different contexts and ways of discoursing about those experiences and how to get there. So human rights are universal. 
uh, which is a rejection of both the nationalistic and culturally particular views. Every human being wants some sets of basic protections uh, and, and economic abundance and speech and assembly and so on. But then how that manifests looks very different. And there's uh, different traditions that have discoursed on rights in different ways. There's a great book by Amartya Sen called The Argumentative Indian, where he talks about how, as an example, the Indian tradition has multiple flowing uh, sources for arguments in favor of democratic and open and economically just societies. Um, and so I think that this cosmopolitanism with a ground in materialist politics and Marxist analysis of the economic base is where it is, is where things, is, is the best way to go about things. We're in a global society, we're in a deeply interconnected one. We have to overcome all sorts of legacies of division, abuse, and oppression. Um, but we also have to create cohesion, and integration, and actually build models for things that are better. And part of how we do that is by really genuinely recognizing the global interconnectedness of everybody and really deeply reading from and going in between different traditions and synthesizing them, looking for synthesis, looking for points of reference. I, that's how we do this show. I think Amilcar Cabral has more to teach us about 2020 in the United States than almost anybody who's writing about 2020 in the United States. So this is my perspective. And, and the reason I wanna bring in integral theory or some of the ideas around something called metamodernism, and I would check out uh, Jeremy Johnson and Brent Cooper and Michelle Bowens with Peer to Peer Foundation. And this is like where you know it gets trickier. I've been kind of saying like, look, I, you know, there is like a spiritual, for lack of a better word, element to this. Because in order to develop that, hey, abstract, what's up? Let me just say, uh, as you guys uh, are, flo are floating in, uh, please hit us with super chats. We need that YouTube has been, I mean, we've lost a lot of revenue on YouTube. The show is built around memberships and Patreon which is the most important way. So go to patreon.com slash TMBS. Uh, but, you know, we use YouTube to kind of get the show out, market it a little bit, and of course, have the main show and all the clips. And that work is important. And, you know, obviously, uh, all of that's key. So these super chats do help. So if you can, hit the like button and hit us with a super chat. And if I have time, I'll get to super chat questions. Um, but sorry, before that diversion. So to get to this cosmopolitan socialist vantage point and to really develop this sort of empathy, the patience, the capacity at synthesis, and also complexity and nuance. This is not another moralistic story. We have competing social media driven, just, just various versions of mega stupidity right now that preach pure, you know, black or white binary narratives that don't have any room for human complexity, historical complexity and rigor, right? I mean, again, you know, you read Adolf Reed in class notes, that's the Adolf Reed reference. He really identified that. The delusion and moralism in the left that is only accelerated with woke culture. So this is a model that is about like, what does it actually mean to be truly global to the extent we can, local, national, and international simultaneously, east, west, north, south, but from a place of actual growth and empathy. And this is where, again, this, this questions of consciousness come in. The questions of cultivating empathy, cultivating compassion, cultivating awareness, the complete antithesis of social media modes long-term thinking, compassion, seeing complexity, comfort with oneself, solitude, the opposite of an instant gratification, the attempt to constantly humanize and not dehumanize your fellow humans. These are all completely countervailing forces to the market technologic that subsumes all of us today. And so integral theory which is something that a lot of, you know, it covers a lot of uh, people. Sri Aurobindo was a great Indian integral theorist. 
William Irwin Thompson was a fascinating public intellectual. The most well-known guy is probably a guy named Ken Wilber, who I'll tell you, uh, in my opinion, has some, you know, he's, when it comes to things like politics, policy, history, the guy, this is not the guy, I'll be it's very diplomatic, it's just not his strong suit. He's not uh, informed or up on that stuff, and it affects his analysis. But this model has definitely created some brilliant maps of integrating worldviews, which we really need to do. We need to have a much greater understanding of both how other people are seeing, experiencing, and then enacting in the world. This is a necessity. It's a necessity with all of the extraordinary splits in the United States and the kind of serious analysis we need to figure out even the different types of ruling class right now in this society. Thank you so much. And it also is gonna be very necessary as the United States declines, relatively speaking. That's one of the things you know that shows up in the China coverage on the show. Of course we need to talk about the crisis dealing, uh, you know, and the horrific repression of the Uyghurs as an example. And I care quite a bit about the Tibetan uh, oppression as well. But we also need to understand literally the Chinese worldview to the extent we can. We need to understand these things, not in, and, and, and in a bipartisan way, uh, and well beyond that boring word in the United States, not in that milquetoast centrist, we all just figured out and meet in some crappy middle, but literally that we need to humanize as many as possible and then try to create cohesion to enact real systems change. Because right now you see so much of these velocity of serious social action in the United States. I mean, they still, we're, we're still hugely behind. There isn't the countervailing force of labor to capital. These uprisings are extraordinary. Where are they going? In some good directions, but also the new boon and the toxic, horrifying, grotesque HR industry, the diversity consulting scam, which is often just companies covering their asses from discrimination lawsuits they should face with very little empirical basis in the research. And then of course a renewal and another cycle of the horrifying toxicity of online culture. So we need to get to this place with, of, of, of humanization, understanding and synthesis. And ultimately, my frame is that cosmopolitan socialist frame. That's what I'm most excited about. But the integral frame, what it does is it has, um, among other things, a quadrant model, which I think is fascinating. I'll just explain it to that. And this is the book. It's, uh, it's not a great, I mean, it's a good book. It's got some good theory. It's very dated in other ways, but it's got some good outlines here. It's called The Theory of Everything by Ken Wilber. And the quadrants map different views of the world. What you have on the right side is objective systems and on the left side, subjective systems. And then you have uh, at the base, uh, social and at the uh, top, individual. I could be actually mixing those up. So in other words, let's take it you know, really clearly. You're an individual, you're dealing with something like depression, uh, which familiar with. There could be subjective and objective components of it. Maybe you're, you know, maybe there's something happening with you physiologically. You address it that way. But then there's also deep questions of your life and meaning and how you feel and how you treat others and how you're treated. And those are the subjective realms. They both matter. In the law, in the um, social systems, there's objective systems. There's objective systems. That This is the way we move currency. This is how technology works. This is how economy works. But then there's always cultural stories that correlate with them, right? This is, again, we go back historically, we look at the rise of the taxonomy of European racism and white supremacy. It correlates. There's the expansion of Europe, of colonialism and imperialism. And then we do, uh, and, then, and then those cultures manifest taxonomies of other human beings and stories and narratives, religious and quote unquote scientific, to justify racism. You see, those things are working in the objective and subjective realms. And 
and so what he does is he kind of shows you that a lot of different worldviews, they all can have validity, but they're usually coming from one of these different viewpoints. A lot of people will say like, okay, the main source of the action is individual subjectivity, right? The main source of the action is individual objectivity. The main source of the action is social materiality, or the main source of the action is uh, cultural stories and myths. And the answer from Wilbur, and the answer actually, if you read Gramsci in a certain way, is integral, and then it's all. It's all of the above. And then we start to have this perspective of wanting to have some flexibility in how we look at things and, and, and a deep tolerance, like the tolerance that someone like a Pepe Mojica talks about. Not a kind of, you know, yeah, well, you just gotta tolerate everybody. And it's, it's, it's deeper. Cause like also ultimately you do, it's another dynamic. <laughs> tolerate everything, you have battles in politics, but you, you, you want to understand the engine of different worldviews. And in that mix, he's including, and modern modernism in certain ways points to this, and certainly, you know, Jeremy Johnson, the contemplative work. And at its best, some connection to a spiritual practice or any type of conscientious cultivation of empathy we're all trying and we're all failing. That's the point. That also cultivates the self-compassion. Is going to give us some of the capacity to have some of the sort of flexibility of mind and emotions to move in between worldviews, pivot in between them, and start to create some of that synthesis. That sort of real range of empathy and intellect. So I hope this made some sense, guys. I'm using these things to, you know, formulate the stuff that I'm really thinking about for like future books and just stuff that I care about and want to share. Um, and so I, I think that this is definitely, um, you know, this is something that uh, is, is, is important to me. I'm not, you know, I'm not into the whole quackery, whatever. I mean, I, I have plenty, plenty of criticisms of, of Wilbur, but let, let, that's actually exactly what I'm talking about. Even just that, like that you can, that work cannot just be reduced to like the online quack library or whatever. We got to figure out how to think through things in a much more nuanced way and see human beings, particularly at an individual level, in a much more nuanced way. So guys, I hope that was so much helpful. I hope that made some sense. Please go to patreon.com slash TMBS, become a patron. Thank you, Mohammed. And I saw that you're reading class notes. That's awesome. I'll always say it. Please, my God, read class notes by Adolf Reed. Read uh, and uh, read um, Torrey Reed as well. Uh, but if there's any, I got a few minutes. Um, take a few super chats um, and of course, Go to patreon.com slash TMBS to become a patron of The Michael Brooks Show. Go to tmbs.fm. Go to Red Emma's or your local independent bookstore to buy this book, Against the Web, Cosmopolitan Answer to the New Right. Acceptance doesn't mean that you're not making distinctions. Um, and uh, follow up on all this other stuff. But if you guys, uh, anything on the Super Chat? If not... Um, I'll wrap this up and I will wish each and every one of you all my very best. Please treat yourselves well, treat each other better, treat each other well, uh, treat yourself better. Um, and, uh, log off if you can. And, uh, there will be books that TMBS is self-publishing that I will do audio versions of. We're doing a TMBS guide to key concepts like internationalism and anti-essentialism. And we're also doing a TMBS guide on uh, post-colonialism in Africa with the great Milton Alamadi. Uh, thank you, patron. All right, guys, much love to all of you. Stay safe, uh, hit the like button on the way out, hit subscribe if you haven't yet, all that stuff. Go to patreon.com slash TMBS. And most importantly, stay safe. Stay strong, be well, much love people.